Beth, thank you so much for joining me today. Your global education initiative, Becoming X, was launched in 2020. Why did you feel there was a need for it and what impact has it had so far? First of all, education is amazing. It's, it's vital, it's important. Teachers do a fantastic job under huge pressure. And, uh, and all of us can remember great teachers in our life. Likewise, probably we can remember the not so good ones. But I do feel, you know, as so many people around the world feel at the moment, that there is a huge gap uh, in education between actually the skills young people need for life and many of the things that are just taught in schools, you know. And that there's a lot of pressure on, on, you know, academic institutions and, you know, a lot of league table staff and academics. As you and me know, in the real world, you know, other skills are needed. And it was really out of this need that Becoming X was originally born to try and empower young people with things that are relevant for them and empowering for them and, and close that life skills bit gap a little bit and to demystify for young people actually what it takes to succeed uh, in their life ahead. There are no shortcuts to success, but there are some secrets. What's the reaction been like so far, both from the students and also from the education system itself? Well, education systems are always hard and slow to move. You know, they're big oil tankers, you know, they, they, they move slowly, but the kids love it. You know, it's university we've launched now, becoming ex-education in 250 schools. And it's been incredible seeing the take up. You know, how often do we hear kids going, what's the point of learning That's this really stuff? You know, is this relevant for me? And I think when you empower them with, you know, personal development courses, it's exciting and, you know, great becoming X. Kids, kids love it. So the feedback for us has been amazing. The message now is let let's spread this. You know, we launched becoming X education worldwide today. It's now available for schools. Uh, and what's different about this is it's done with real people. You know, so we've interviewed some of the, you know, some of the most inspirational people on the planet, from astronauts to, you know, uh, Hollywood stars to sports stars to Nobel Prize winners to the best teachers in the world to veterans and and found and asked them what what's really helped you in your life you know behind the scenes what's really been key and getting the kind of those really honest answers and putting them together in lots of you know films and clips and case studies that are really simple just for teachers to be able to you know run as a program and you know we do everything from kind of you know building resilience to how to be a great team player to how to deal with failure, to how to deal with social media, to how to be an entrepreneur and a leader. And are things that we hope will be relevant and empowering for young people. And as a parent, you know, I've seen it. You know, I've seen it first up. I want, I want my kids to have stuff, real world stuff, that's really going to help them as they, as they leave school. Talking about resilience, Bear, there's been huge challenges, of course, throughout the pandemic and as the world is coming out afterwards. And of course, with mental health and well-being, what's your advice there? Well, mental health is rightly an, a key part of all of our arsenal, isn't it? You know, to, to be happy and to be, you know, successful in life. You know, you've got to look after yourself, you know, physically and mentally and emotionally. And, uh, you know, I think these last two years have been incredibly hard on everybody, but I think especially young people, you know, being uh, separated from communities and isolated and living online in an on online world. You know, I think as we emerge from this time, programs and things that can empower people and give them that inner resilience are going are gonna to fly, you know. And it, in a way, this, this pandemic for Becoming X has been incredibly timely. You know, we took three years building this program with, all of these inspirational people and to be able to launch Becoming X Education now at this time where young people need these skills uh, feels sort of, you know, it feels really right. And it's been amazing seeing the take up and the positive response from young people. And generally people are savvy, young people are savvy, you know, they know the skills they need. They, and when you give them a few tools, they're like, okay, got it. And, uh, and that's always amazing to see. How does the business model for Becoming X Education work? Yeah, so, so schools sign up to it and download it from becomingx.com. And, uh, and, you know, it works out really super cheap, really, for, for kids individually. It works out, I think, for the schools to, 
to put it into their program. The program is like two pounds a year per student, you know. So, uh, you know, and we've linked also Becoming X with our Becoming X Foundation to really empower, you know, schools all over the world, even those that can't afford it to be able to get access to this. You know, this is a this is a, a project where we're really trying to just make the world a better place and empower young people more, make it affordable and accessible. And uh, and we're beginning this journey. We're proud of our partnerships. You know, we've, we've attracted some of the biggest companies in the world to support this. who have wanted to take this program and sponsor it into uh, tough areas and tough communities and difficult schools. And that's been amazing to see. But uh, yeah, yeah, proud of proud of the team. You know, they've worked incredibly hard on this and proud of what it's doing. Bear, why do you think governments aren't doing more? And what would you like to see them doing in terms of supporting this type of education and empowering young people? Well, I think, first of all, governments got to realise that there is a gap, you know, that, that, that the personal development side of curriculums is critical, is truly critical. And to understand that most of the programmes out there are, you know, underserving and they're, and they're essentially quite boring. And, you know, so for us to be able to sort of bring these, you know, iconic, inspirational, I think above all inspirational people to Becoming X, uh, to share their insights uh, has been key. But I think also governments have got to make time in the school curriculum for this, you know, and that comes at a government level. That that's something we can't do. You know, we hear it time and time again from schools is that when we trial it there, the students love it. Uh, the schools, the teachers love it because it's helping them do their job really well. And 99% of the teachers are incredible like that. They want tools to, to, you know, to be able to teach and inspire kids well. But if there's not room in an academic program, there's not time in the timetables, you know, kids get underserved. So I think at the government level, it's support us, uh, see the power of becoming X, uh, but also make room for it and make sure that any schools who can't afford it can afford it. Where does your own passion to make a difference within the sector come from in terms of education? Well, I was incredibly lucky at school. You know, I, I, I got an amazing education, but even with an amazing education, I still felt in so many ways under-equipped for life. And so many of the key lessons I've learned in my life have been just through experience and through, you know, and through failing and getting it wrong. And often I think back and go, I think, God, I wish I was taught that stuff as a kid. And, uh, and I hear this so often from so many people, you know, and I think the truth is in my education that the most valuable thing I learned, I was never taught, you know, it, it, it's absolutely true. I was never taught in a classroom, you know, it's about how to deal with faith, you know, how to pick yourself up, how to, how to develop that never give up attitude, that tenacity, that, you know, having the courage to not listen to the dream stealers and, and have your, set your goals and physically set them and go for it and understand the role of failures and obstacles and storms that come your way and, and learn the tools that are going to help you you know how, the skills you need the attitudes you need those winning attitudes you need how to build relationships you know how to gain knowledge and um, and like I said I think young people get this but you've got to give them the kind of the nudge and the tools and the the kind of the place to go to find it. Who have been some of your role models? Who have you looked up to? I think, uh, I, you know, so many people in my life, you know, often the, you know, I do really remember great teachers. I think that first and foremost, you know, like I said at the beginning, when you, when you find a great teacher, it stays with you for life. And, and I, I feel on many areas, I stand on the shoulders of giants like that in, in my career. And, and some of the early teachers and later teachers were inspirational for me. Uh, I think my late father was a great influence as well. You know, when I came back, not always with very brilliant school reports, you know, I was never at the top of anything, whether it's sports or academics. You know, when I came back, those things weren't important to him. I remember he used to go, are you happy? Are you loving what you do? Have you found something you really love? You know, how are your relationships with those, your, with your good buddies? You know, and those sort of things always matter more. And in many ways, those are the sort of things we're trying to teach. You know, he was ahead of his time, really. You know, he's no longer, you know, alive now, but I know he would be proud of this. He'd, he'd dig the values that this stands for and he'd want to champion it in, in my kids and his grandchildren. So um, in some ways, they're sort of old values and old skills, but in many ways, they're needed now more than ever and they're, they're more relevant and they're actually new skills. So... Um, yeah, it's interesting space and time, isn't it? 
It is an interesting time, as you say, Bear, and values are so important. How worried are you about the next generation, specifically in our current climate as we see it? Well, I think um, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be an old guy pontificating about young people. Instead, I'm, I'm going to say what I, I experienced, which is that young people are amazing, you know, truly amazing, more resilient, more innovative, more pioneering more ambitious than we can ever imagine. You know, it's like, who was it, Walt Disney who said that young people uh, take on the impossible and make it possible time after time. You know, it's young people who are gonna change the world. It's young people who are gonna solve climate change. And it's young people who are gonna take tools like Becoming X and make it their own and make it bigger and, and use it, you know, for, for hopefully for good. But, um, but schools have a job to do, you know, and we, we fail young people if all we do is focus on academics and, uh, and, you know, natural talent for kids, you know, those things don't have a lot of currency in life. You know, they have currency at school. School heroes, always the sporty, the academic, the good looking one. But the life hero is different. The life hero is always the dogged, the determined, the resilient, you know, the person who might not get noticed, but he keeps getting back on his feet. Even when he gets back, he gets up again. He keeps going. He stays to the vision. And these are the sort of skills that we're trying to teach at Becoming X. And what's your vision for education and Becoming X going forward? I think the vision for this is that Becoming X becomes a digital personal development program that is accessible all around the world for everyone. For schools, you know, twinned with schools that can't afford it, but empowering for, for students at all ages to be able to learn these vital life skills, to demystify what it takes to actually succeed, to be able to reevaluate and refocus on the things that are really going to help them beyond school, not just in school. And for you personally, Bear, what's your next adventure? Well, from here, I've just got back from the Arctic late last night with, uh, with the Royal Marines up there, seeing some of their training they're doing, it's amazing. Uh, I'm back for a day at home and then heading off to Central America, to the jungles, back on Running Wild, back filming with uh, many of these Hollywood stars, again, many of these Hollywood stars who've helped us so much on Becoming X, you know, letting us into their lives and, and their failures and their struggles as well as their triumphs. And uh, I'm always grateful for that show and uh, grateful for all it stands for. Excited for the adventure, never giving up. Bear Grylls, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Danny. You're right.